Today on Grand Touring Concepts, we're back working with the flow bench. Sean, what are we up to? We're baselining the cylinder head to see what the flow is from valve close all the way to max open. And we're checking it with a dirty valve and chamber versus a clean valve and chamber and comparing the flow. Absolutely. So what we have here is our typical 2121 cylinder head left over from the original 1993 Neva. And that engine seen a hard life. Really not an ideal treatment. So it's full of carbon, it's full of oil and other deposits. So we're going to test it and see what a typical high mileage head will flow and clean it up see if it makes a difference. Stay tuned for that. Next step for this project to reliably open and close the valves for where we want to measure lift at different points of the camshaft lobe set is to build a valve opener. It's a very simple system. It's comprised of a couple pieces. The whole thing started as a chunk of thick rectangular stock that cut down. Then we drilled and tapped a hole in one end for a bolt. I epoxied a magnet into the other end so that it'll hold the valve so that we don't have to take springs on and off for constantly adjusting it. I machined down the other end so it's nice and flat so we can put a dial indicator on there to actually measure exactly how much lift we're putting into the valve. After that, it was a matter of drilling a hole in the other end so that we can bolt it to where the lifter sits on the cylinder head. Then I'm just using one of the factory lot of cylinder head bolts with a couple spacers that I made out of some conduit. And it's quite simple, a little spacer through the piece, big spacer on the back side, screw it into the head. And then we tighten it all down and as you can already see it, it hooks into the valve. And that'll hold it while we set whatever lift we want out of our camshaft or simulated camshaft as it were. Tighten that down so it can't go nowhere. And yeah, you throw it down, it shows the valve down thread it up, pulls the valve up. Then we use our dial indicator, which on a lot of has multiple uses, including adjusting valves, which will be covered in a later video. It's cheap kit, cost all 25 bucks. You don't need an expensive one. Then it's a matter of assembling that to where you want. We'll probably go off of this stud. You always want to uh, set up on a hard mounting point. I just don't like to clamp to the aluminum if I don't have to. Yep, just like that. We ran into a bit of a snag. On our dry test of setting this up, we actually ran into a problem. The magnet is not staying glued to the bolt. So as we try and adjust things, or when we put vacuum, it's actually gonna pull it away and not give us a proper reading. So we have to disassemble this. We're gonna put a small valve spring in to help hold the valve, and then we'll start over, essentially. We now have our small secondary valve spring installed. We didn't use the big main one because we don't need a huge amount of spring tension, just enough to hold the valve where we want when we have vacuum applied. So put her back together as it would be normal, minus one spring, reset up our jig, put our dial indicator in place, and then just turn the knob to where we got it zeroed out. Now we can start applying vacuum and uh, turning the adjustment and see where our head flows at different points of lift. After our initial testing, we found some interesting things. This head on the intake side stalls out at 200 thou lift, which no most heads normally start to stall out around the 350 to 400 range. We, at 200 thou lift, it is not flowing any better. And in fact, once you hit the 350 thou lift, it actually starts to flow worse and makes, would make less power in this configuration. Now this is dirty valves and a dirty chamber, which is, you know, kind of the way any mile, uh, motor with high mileage would be. It's gonna have dirty valves, dirty chambers, if you don't have them cleaned. On the intake side, however, there's not as much flow, that's to be expected with an intake side, but it falls off predictably as it lifts, you know, you get always a little more flow, a little more flow, and it does it evenly across the board. But the intake side is where, right as of right now, is where this thing has serious, serious flow problems. Now we're going to clean the valves, clean the combustion chamber, and see how it flows after we do that.
We now have the chambers all cleaned up, all the carbon removed. The carbon is removed from the valves. Now we have to reassemble it and put it back together so we can see if there's any changes at all in our flow. Now how we got to there is we used a Dremel with this neat little wand attachment so that you can get in these tiny ports that these things have. As a comparison on a North American V8, you can use the Dremel itself to get in there and on these you need this, which I find kind of funny. We used a bunch of pieces from our little kit, uh, some sanding drums as well as tapered cones to get in there and try not to remove any aluminum, just to remove as much carbon as possible. We will actually pour it out and see what we can get for flow in a later video. How we clean the valves up is we just took a dirty valve, put it to the grinder and wire wheeled all the carbon, all the crud off them down till they were back to new. We also found a substantial carbon ring around the edge of the valve and we're hoping that that was impeding some of the flow on the intake valve. We have everything cleaned up, all the carbon removed, the whole jig set back up. We have our dial indicator set at zero. Now it's just a matter of turning on the vacuum cleaner and I'm gonna run through a 100 thou lift, 200 thou, 300 thou, 400 thou and show you what the flow changes on here and how we're getting our measurements. So we are at our zero, so the valve is closed. We will let the water stabilize. We're gonna open up the one thou of lift to where the cam is initially starting to open the valve. Now I'm gonna to go to two thou of lift, the 200 thou of lift. And as you can see, the water level drops as everything becomes more efficient as the valve opens. And now we're gonna to go to 300 thou of lift. Now we're gonna to go to 400 thou of lift. So as you can see, it's not a complicated rig for how we built it, but it's actually very precise unless let's do exact measurements. So we'll be able to tune the ports and mod things as we go. That concludes our testing with the cylinder head, dirty as it was pulled from the engine, and clean after we've brushed off the valves and basically cleaned any carbon that we could find out of the inlet ports on that cylinder. And the results were quite interesting, weren't they? Oh, it was quite astounding actually. Apparently, carbon valves and a dirty chamber makes a hell of a difference. Yeah, quite a bit. We noticed that at very low lift, there wasn't really a lot of change. However, as soon as you hit about 250 inches of lift, everything changed dramatically, dirty versus clean. Yeah, uh, the 300 mark, which is really important, was a big change, but the top end especially was a relative big change percentage-wise, even if it wasn't still optimal flow which is something else we found. The head actually flows kind of poorly. Yeah, it flows really quite bad. It flows less at peak lift on any cam, whether it's stock or modified, than it does at 300 thou, which was quite mind-boggling. Now on the exhaust side, the exhaust valve didn't have uh, near as much carbon as the intake side did, but the port was really, really dirty. You pulled, I believe, one millimeter or so of just carbon out of that port, and that really gave us a rewarding change. Yeah, on the intake, on the exhaust side, yeah, it made a big difference just removing the carbon out of the entire thing, which also leads us to believe that if I removed a millimeter out of the whole port, if I was to remove a millimeter of aluminum, I should see the same type of change, as long as the valve is not the limiting factor in that head flow right now. So some of the other lessons learned were that our data is very repeatable. Our flow bench is remarkably repeatable. We could take it apart, put it together and test it. Because all we had to do was zero out the fluid level every single time, which was just sliding our tape, and it was really good to go. Yeah, it repeated itself. It's quite surprising. The other thing we found is that the intake side, if you remove the intake valve completely, flowed less than it did with the intake valve in and opened at uh, 480 thou. 
Yeah, absolutely. It turns out that that intake valve is a very important part of the flow, both in and out of the head. Is what we found with the intake valve completely removed, it flowed about as poorly as only having the valve cracked at 150 inches of lift, which is barely open. Yeah, it was actually quite surprising. It, it just didn't flow at all. So that was really quite uh, telling because I know I've read accounts of the old days with muscle car hot rodding that people would pour a cylinder head without the valves installed, get a gain, and then when they actually assembled the cylinder head, put it on the vehicle, their gains weren't really all that great. And in some cases it was slower, less performance. Yep, you could actually make it worse. But th that number also dictates and tells us that a performance intake valve and changing that should also bring us big gains in the head. If the valve changes that much of the dynamics of the cylinder head, a performance one that's got a better valve angle and has been back cut more should do better. Even if you aren't going to do any valves, you're not going to do any port work, and you have a high mileage Lada, simply just decarboning everything, whether it's with a chemical treatment, in Canada we have sea foam available, or something else like that to strip carbon out of the combustion chambers, off the valves, and out of the actual intake and exhaust ports, there's a gain there. Yeah, and if you're real ambitious, you could pull the cylinder head off just to clean the carbon out. It would not do you bad. It's about the same as doing a header or a better exhaust on it for flow. So most importantly is we haven't provided in this video a lot of data because spitting numbers out at a camera just isn't valuable to anyone. So it's what we will do is we'll have an article that will be a companion to this video and that will be posted on gtconcepts.ca and everyone will be able to take a look through there, see our findings, look at our actual numbers, and cross-reference them. We'll continue to build that out as we collect more data. So, stay tuned for our next video, where we'll get into some other interesting aspects. We'll do a little bit of maintenance stuff. We have another video coming up with kind of a cosmetic uh, driver ergonomics video, yep. so to speak. We can't go too much further on the head right now, just because I'm waiting on more parts to show up. I've got to do valve guides, valves, a bunch of stuff like that. I can't port the head until I have all them pieces and have them stuff installed first. So. Sure, so we got more stuff in the pipe, however you won't be seeing the cylinder head for just a little while more. Nope. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Later.